Frederick Douglass was the most important black American leader of the 19th century. He was born Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, in Talbot County, on Maryland's eastern shore in 1808 sick, the son of a slave woman, and in all likelihood, her white master. Upon his escape from slavery at age 20, Douglas adopted a new surname from the hero of Sir Walter Scott's The Lady of the Lake. Douglas immortalized his formative years as a slave in the first of three autobiographies, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, published in 1845. This and two subsequent autobiographies, My Bondage and My Freedom, 1855, and The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, 1881, mark Douglass's greatest contributions to Southern culture. Douglass's public life ranged from his work as an abolitionist in the early 1840s to his attacks on Jim Crow segregation in the 1890s. Douglass lived the bulk of his career in Rochester, New York, where for 16 years he edited the most influential black newspaper of the mid-19th century, called successively The North Star, 1847-51, Frederick Douglass' Paper, 1851-58. Douglas achieved international fame as an order with few peers and as a writer of persuasive power. In thousands of speeches and editorials Douglas levied an irresistible indictment against slavery and racism, provided an indomitable voice of hope for his people, embraced anti-slavery politics. Douglas welcomed the Civil War in 1861 as a moral crusade to eradicate the evil of slavery. During the war he labored as a fierce propagandist of the Union cause and emancipation, as a recruiter of black troops, and on two occasions as an advisor to President Abraham Lincoln. Douglas made a major contribution to the intellectual tradition of millennial nationalism, the outlook from which many Americans, North, and South, interpreted the Civil War. He traveled and lectured widely on racial issues, but his most popular topic was self-made men. By the 1870s Douglas had moved to Washington, D.C., where he edited the newspaper The New National Era and became president of the ill-fated Freedmen's Bank. Douglas never lost a sense of attachment to the South. Nothing but an intense love of personal freedom keeps us, fugitive slaves, from the South, Douglas wrote in 1848. He often referred to Maryland as his own dear native soil. Brilliant, heroic, and complex. Douglas became a symbol of his age and a unique American voice for humanism and social justice. His life and thought will always speak profoundly to the dilemma of being black in America. Douglas died of heart failure in 1895, the year Booker T.